Today we're gonna to make a markdown component and we're gonna do it using Ember Auto Import and some libraries of our choosing. Now, back in the day, if I needed a markdown component, I might go search for an add-on. We were using uh, an add-on in Ember Maps code base that kind of became stale and unmaintained and that's what led to this video. And so today we're just going to piece together some libraries of our own and that's gonna mean that we're gonna understand how this thing works and we're not gonna get in a situation where maybe an add-on falls out of sync with the underlying libraries that it's wrapping. So Ember Auto Import makes this really easy. I learned a lot making this component in our own code base. So I'm gonna show you how we did that today. So we're in a brand new Ember app here. I've just removed some of the default folders and set up pods. And our goal is gonna to be to end up with something like this, Markdown component that takes in a source property, which is just gonna be some Markdown text and this is just gonna render out this text as HTML. So let's come up here and create components, markdown, and a template. This is the markdown component. And here we can see our new component. Now because I'm on Ember 3.5 here, we get to use single word components and angle brackets, so this is pretty nice. So first let's just start with a component that doesn't take any attributes. We'll create a component file here and we'll give it a source of hello markdown. And we can render that property in the template here. And there we see it. So what we want this component to do is render this into HTML. And for that, we need a markdown parser. The library we're going to use is called Markdownit. It's a popular NPM package, and this is the beauty of auto import. We're just going to be able to install this and use it just as a plain NPM dependency. So first, I'm going to come back to my server, shut this down, go ahead and ember install ember auto import. And you can see we're using yarn here, so we can go ahead and yarn add to our dev dependencies Markdownit. And if we come to our component, this should let us just do import markdownit from markdownit. So we can log this guy out, come back, start our server, and see if everything's wired up correctly. And there we see the markdownit library function being logged to the console. So this is really cool. Auto import makes this kind of stuff really easy to work with. So what we can do is new up an instance of markdownit and this is going to give us kind of an instance of this renderer and then we can come down here and say we want to render some html this is going to be the rendered version of our source and this is going to be a computed property so we'll import computed depends on source and we can just return this source but we want to call markdown.render on it and now if we open up the template, instead of rendering the source, we should be able to render the HTML. So let's save this, come back. And now we can see that that was rendered as HTML here, but we don't want to render the actual string. We want this to actually be HTML. So over here in our component, we're going to import HTML safe. And we'll just pass this into HTML safe, which is gonna tell Ember, go ahead and render that. And there we go, we can see Markdown working for us. And we can come back and render even more Markdown. And we can see that's bold, that's italics. So this is pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and see if we can pass this in. Close these guys over here. And in our application template, let's go ahead and create a controller Let's create maybe some blog post that's gonna be some markdown, some markdown. And let's pass that in, blog post. And there we go, we, we see this is rendering as an H1. And we'll come back to this template and get rid of this as well. Now let's get a little more content in here. We can come back here and paste in 
this snippet of Markdown, and this is actually from the Ember Guides Quick Start. And let's just format this so it's kind of nice and easier for us to read here in the code. So if we save this, well, this all looks like it's just text. And what's going on here is that because the source code here is indented by four spaces, well, that's significant in Markdown. So if I were to put this in the first line, we'd see that that actually gets rendered as an H1 tag. But the rest, because of these four lines of indent here, this is being treated as code. So we could just select this and de-dent it like this, and we get kind of our blog post here. But that's a bummer to have to do that inside of our code if we ever want snippets like this. So instead, what I'm going to do is install another package, npm dedent. And this is just a handy little utility that lets us dedent strings from multi-line text like this. And again, because we're using auto import, I can just come here, stop my server, yarn add dedent, start the server again, and back in our code, should be able to import dedent from dedent, and we can just put dedent right here, and that will run on this template string. So let's save this and give it a shot. We see our blog post being rendered, even though our code is indented like this. So this is working. This is pretty cool. And again, it just simplifies the ability for us to use any package from NPM tremendously. Okay, so now we have all of this working. We can see that Markdown is rendering these lists. And if we look here, it's an ordered list. These are all paragraph tags. Here's an H2. We have some code here, and that's being rendered over here with these triple ticks. Now we have to escape these because otherwise they'll be treated as ending this template string up here. But still, it's definitely recognizing this block here. Now, if we come here and paste the rest of the quick start, we can see it all rendering here, and it looks pretty good. But the one improvement we can make is to get some syntax highlighting on these code blocks right here. And the way we're going to do that is using another NPM package called highlight.js. So this is going to add syntax highlighting to our rendered markdown. And if we come down to the usage guide, we can see that we can also get this library via npm, highlight.js. So we'll come back and stop our app. We'll run yarn, add, highlight.js, and dev. And over here in our markdown component, we can actually pass some options to this markdown at renderer here. And one of those options is a highlight function. And this takes in a string of code and a language, and that lang comes from the three ticks in the code blocks of our post. So if we come look at our controller here, every time we use three ticks, we usually pass in a language. Sometimes that'll be JavaScript, sometimes that will be handlebars, and so on. So we get that language here, and we just need to return some highlighted code for this to work. So to do that, we're going to import hljs from highlight.js. And here we'll be able to return hljs.highlight, and this function actually takes the language first and then the code, and it returns an object with some information, but the value property is what we want. That's the actual highlighted code. So let's save this and take a look. Forgot to restart the server. And there we see an error, unknown language text. So when we call highlight like this, HLJS expects to know the specific language we're passing into it. And if it doesn't, we're gonna get that error. So what we can do is we can check if hljs.getLanguage and then pass in the lang, then we'll go ahead and highlight the code. Otherwise, we'll just return the original code. And I don't like having multiple returns in my functions here, so we'll just create a new variable called highlighted code. And then right here, we'll highlight it. And we can actually default this to the code. And now we can re remove this, and then we can return the highlighted code. So by default, we're just gonna have the unhighlighted code. And then if we have support for language highlighting for the language that's being passed in, we'll go ahead and highlight it and return it.
So now if we take a look, let's go down to some of the JavaScript. We can see here is a route example. We see that the code class has language JavaScript. And if we open this up, we see that this code has kind of been parsed and put into these different tokens and wrapped in spans with classes for highlight.js to actually highlight it. But we don't actually see those styles applied. And that's because there's another step we need to do, which is to actually import the highlight.js CSS. And that's just an asset from the node package. So we can come here to our Ember CLI build file, use app.import, and we can find these styles in node modules, highlight.js styles. And let's check out the Atom one dark theme here. Save this. And now we need to restart our server since we modified the Ember CLI build file. And now in our quick start here, we can see that there is some highlighting going on. Now there's one problem. We loaded the Atom one dark theme, but this looks white to me. And if I go over to highlight JS, then we click on the languages and styles. We can find Atom one dark, and we can see it's supposed to look dark like this. Now the problem is for each one of these blocks that are in a pre tag, we actually need a wrapper class. So if we click class here and we add HLJS, that's going to get us what we're looking for. So that's going to be how highlight.js makes sure that the theme is applied to this wrapper element here. But by default, when we do markdown it and run that on some code block, it just returns a pre tag with no class, the code that has this language class, and then all this stuff inside. Well, fortunately for us, right now we're returning the code that starts with what's inside the code block. But if we return a pre tag of our own with the code inside, then we'll see here that we get the pre, the code, and then our rendered code block. And that means we can customize this element right here. So that means we can add a class of our own. So we'll just go ahead and do HLJS right on this wrapper tag. And just like that, we've got syntax highlighting in our blog post here. Now we can come over to our CSS file for the application and maybe add some base styles here. Maybe we'll add a font family of sans serif. And we can always throw a class on our markdown component so that we can say max width of 600 pixels and margin of auto left and right. We can add some line height here and maybe even bump up the base font size to 17 pixels. And if we scroll through this, we can see that we have syntax highlighting for our handlebars templates. We've got some kind of unhighlighted shell scripts here, but this is looking pretty good. And the nice thing about this is if we want to change the theme, well, we can just come here and import Atom one light, do a quick reboot of our server. And now we have light syntax highlighting. So this is, this is really neat. Now, before we go, there is one optimization that we can perform here. And if we come to the network tab and refresh, take a look at our vendor JS file and we search for small talk. Now we can see here in node modules, we are importing the small talk language for highlight JS. We're also introducing a bunch of other languages that we probably are never going to write markdown for in this application. So what this means is that all of the highlight JS languages were imported when we added this line to our component called import HLJS from highlight JS. And that's going to add a lot of size to our bundle. But fortunately for us, if we go back to the highlight JS docs and we click on usage, and we scroll down here to the bottom, we can see right here there's a message. It says the default import imports all languages. Therefore, it is likely to be more efficient to import only the library and the languages you need. So instead of importing HLJS from HighlightJS, 
we can just import the lib and then import different languages and register them with the highlighter. So let's get this working. So first we'll just import the highlighter from lib highlight. Save that. And we have things working again, but we shouldn't see any syntax highlighting since we are not importing any of those languages. And it definitely looks like we don't have highlighting here. So what we can do is now import and register some languages. So first let's get JavaScript working. So we'll import JavaScript from highlight.js lib languages JavaScript. And then we'll call hljs.register language. And this one will be JavaScript and we'll pass in that imported language. Save this. And now if we scroll, we can see that we've got JavaScript syntax highlighting here but we have some HTML that's still wrong. So I'm gonna come back to our build file and change this back to dark, cause I like dark. And back in our markdown component, I'll just go ahead and paste in the rest of these languages that we want, as well as the calls to HLJS register language. Save this, start up our server again. And now we should have all of the highlighting taken care of. So there we see an HBS template. Here we have some more HTML, some JavaScript, and this is all back in Adam Dark. And so this is looking really good. And if we come back and check out this vendor file of ours, make this bigger, search for small talk, we don't see it anywhere. So this has made sure that we don't import all those languages that come with highlight.js by default. So we're not importing anything in our bundle that we don't need. And if we ever come across a time where we do need a new language, maybe one of our blog posts uses SAS and we hadn't registered that yet, we now have one place to come, our markdown component, to just see all the languages that we're importing and registering, and we can just add it very easily here. And if we don't have it, we know this will be able to safely fall back and just render that code, even though it doesn't have highlighting, it'll still be rendered in that pre-tag and code block so that it's formatted nice with monospace text and all that good stuff. So this is a pretty handy component, and this is almost exactly what we're using in production on Ember Maps code base. And we can see that it's really easy to use, it's really easy to customize, and it's really easy to understand what's going on here. We're just importing directly from these NPM packages and now I don't have to worry about some add-on that wraps Markdown it or some other library and is really just creating a few functions like this. Uh, if that add-on goes stale and it makes it hard for me to upgrade my app, well, here I'm kind of just piecing these things together. And in this case, since there's really not that much code that's needed, this feels like a real big win in combination with auto import doing the heavy lifting. There's not much configuration and it's actually nice that we have control here over things like our theme and which languages we include. So that was just a really neat component that we made in the last week or two. I wanted to share it with you and I hope you found that useful.